So this is part two of the quick fire questions video. If you haven't seen part one, be sure to go check it out. There will be a link in the description or you guys can go search it on my channel. Maybe there's some questions which you asked, which would have been featured in part one that you would have been waiting for in part two. So make sure you watch part one and part two. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Well, I'll always hold the GBP because obviously I'm in England, but I'll trade in USD with prop firms simply because if you do simple calculations, if you buy a prop firm, they give you 140,000 pounds usually or 200,000 dollars and 200,000 dollars is obviously more after you convert it. So I'll trade with USD, get paid in USD. You know, my bank actually allows USD payments in, so it's completely fine. But usually all my money, my bank accounts are in pounds simply because I live in England. And also if you are trading 200k account instead of 140k, the lot sizes are so much easier to calculate. It's literally, if you're using uh, 10 lots, for example, $100 per pip instead of a random amount for 140k because it's in pounds, not dollars. And obviously you're trading with 10 lots, which is $1 per pip. So when I'm trading with prop firms, I don't really look into the commission too much because if I'm in profit, I'm in profit. A lot of people say, oh, I'm not that profitable because of all the commissions, the high commissions. If you're making 5% on the trade, that $50 commission isn't going to matter. You make 5K, 10K on a trade. What does $50 commission matter? You're entering a trade. There's obviously going to be fees on that trade. The only downside to actually trading with a, an account with no commission or little to no commission is you get higher spreads. The sacrifice with getting zero spreads or lower spreads is simply that you have a commission or a fee on every single lot that you trade. So you're going to be in more trades because tighter spread means your stop loss isn't going to get hit as soon or your entries are going to actually trigger when price is actually in that area. But also you, the downside is you have commissions but it's not really anything to worry about. And it's not really something that I'll pick one firm over the other simply because of the commissions per trade. Well, payouts are going to be lower because if you make $30,000 on a trade, firstly, they take a commission of this trade. So majority of prop firms now take 10 to 20% profit. It used to be 30%, but now it seems to be going lower and lower. And if they take 10%, you obviously only get $27,000 on this trade. And obviously I live in England, so you have to convert that to pounds as well. So if you make $30,000, you're probably only making 20 or maybe like 18, 19K on a 30K trade. So that is why the payouts will always be lower. But if you keep it in dollars, obviously you'll get $27,000. But yeah, commissions, currency fees, this is why the payouts are actually lower when they actually hit my bank. Absolutely not. I feel like if you put money into investments and you then want to start trading, trading should only be done with money that you can afford to lose. So let's say I invested in watches, but then I want to start trading. I'm not going to sell these watches to start trading because if you're actually starting trading, I guess that's what you're saying from the question, you don't have the money, you don't have the experience, then you're most likely going to lose. So you might as well use money that you have sitting around that doesn't really matter if you lose it. Your lifestyle isn't going to change. You'll still be able to eat food if you actually lose this money. Don't go liquidating your ISA, your watches, your index funds or anything you actually have money in. Just start trading because you most likely will never see that money again. What you should do is let's say you have 10K in a savings account. Maybe put 250, 500 into a trading account. Just trade with that. See how you actually perform. And then maybe if you start performing well, you know, it's very, very low chance that actually happens at the start of your journey anyway you can then increase the account size as your experience and profitability increases alongside that so my investment goals for the future firstly the main goal is to increase my wealth through stock investment index funds just making as much money as possible for these investments in the long term from the compound effect obviously if you invest now at an early age then in 10 years 20 years 30 years it's going to accumulate to hopefully a large amount of wealth. Other businesses as well that I can invest in, you know, I want to make it so that these other businesses are bringing me in passive income every single month. And obviously the more money you have, the easier it is to grow these other businesses because you can just start a business, employ people and never have to do any work yourself. It's kind of the main goal. And also property it would be cool to have 
numerous properties around the UK, potentially into other countries in Europe as well. Obviously houses of my own to actually live in whilst making all this money from the investments alongside that. Well, yeah, it's quite tricky because you can't beat the nice English countryside. Other countries are cool, but tax-wise, I would definitely consider it. You know, you have to buy Monaco, Cayman Islands, these sort of countries. But to buy properties in those countries, very, very expensive. Whereas England, I feel like it's quite a nice country. Countries maybe I'd move to France, Italy, you know, countries in Europe that are fairly close, mainly because you do get some tax benefits from this, especially if you own property in these countries as well. I think Italy has a flat rate tax of 100k. So you can never go above that 100k. If you're making under that amount, obviously it's pretty pointless to get the tax benefits, but it wouldn't actually be a benefit at that point. But for now, sticking to England, hopefully getting some property in England soon too, if the, the market does make it a good time to buy. My win rate, wow. That's a secret I'll never tell joking so win rate very very tricky to determine again because of the setup and trade thing but let's just say this 21 win streak at the moment i mean that's pretty good so if you're looking at my myfx book win rate's only 48 percent but it does depend on how many setups you actually take and the trades per setup so I'd say around like 70, 80%, depending on the strategy, depending on the account, because I trade each account differently. But my main account technically is 48%, but we are up 32% in four months. Let's just say that. So it's actually considering doing a whole YouTube video on this because I get a lot of questions. How did you pick GBPUSD? Why did you stop trading gold? And I'll just briefly go over this now. The main reason is I was trading gold in New York session and I didn't want to trade New York session. I wanted to trade GBPUSD because London session, obviously it's early morning in the UK up to around lunchtime, which allowed me to trade for the first few hours of the day after I've actually woken up and then the rest of the day, take it completely off. Whereas if I'm trading GU and gold, you have to trade both sessions. If you're trading just gold, you have the few hours in the morning and then you have to get on the charts and trade. I feel like Doing the work and actually get things done in the morning is actually a lot better. If you're the type of person that doesn't wake up for the first five hours of the day, then it's probably not the best for you. And maybe New York would be good. But the volatility of gold is amazing. You can make massive profits. You can also lose a lot with the volatility. And it can be very frustrating, especially when price just wicks 100 pips randomly. And you, wanna, you just want to die and quit trading. But yeah, GBP USD is the best for myself and my trading. Okay, broker wise, I personally use two different brokers, one being Axie and one being Admiral. I kind of use them for different things. Axie I use for like the news trading, the account flips. And Admiral I use for my day-to-day -day personal account. The main reason I use these two, they're FCA regulated, which means your money is protected up to 85,000 pounds. And they have really, really tight spreads. I use ECN accounts, which means the spreads are super, super tight. And there's not really any delay in the quotes, which is the biggest annoyance in my trading. Previously, when I was using unregulated brokers, you'd enter a trade or you try to do market execution and it would move your entry by a few pips because the quotes are changing every millisecond. So it's very, very annoying. But if you want to get that exact market execution, then definitely check out those brokers. I'm not affiliated with them, but they're just the ones I personally have found the best that suits my own trading. When I'm back testing, I personally use FX Replay simply because you have the TradingView integration anyway. So you're pretty much trading on TradingView with the live trades. So you actually say when to buy, when to sell with a stop loss and take profit. And it tracks your data for you as well. So it tells you your win rate. It tells you which days are the best, which pairs, which setups and everything like this. Your whole overall performance. It's literally a trading journal for your back testing. And, you know, if you want to check it out, there's a link in the description to check out FX Replay. It's just a great tool. And I feel like you guys would love using that for your back testing. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.